So in junior high, we were at a, I was at a friend's house for a sleepover, and one of our friends fell asleep. So we thought we'd play that little trick on him where we, you, you put their hand in a bowl of warm water so they'll pee themselves. Because that's how you should treat your friends. I mean, you know the rules, never fall asleep first. But apparently that trick doesn't work. So we skipped the middleman and just peed on him. <laughs> when he woke up, he was all confused, like, how do I pee in my own nose? <laughs> yes. I think that's about as bad as it's going to get to me. <laughs> so I, I do support a lot of government programs, but I'm... I still really like paying taxes. I mean, who does? You have to get rid of your money. And again, it's good for good causes, but you still have to like let it go. But I have this friend who's in the Air Force Academy, and as part of their training, they have to be tortured. So in case they like crash and get captured and like they're prepared, which is like that's a good idea. So now, whenever I'm running my checks to the government, I just pretend the money's going for the die-hard battery they're gonna hook his testicles up to. <laughs> Now I love paying taxes. <laughs> Once again, I've lost my way. I'm actually a pretty bad citizen. You should be sorry. I'm actually a pretty bad citizen. Um, a very bad American. Whenever... The, the national anthem for me is just the best time to cut in line at the concession stands. <laughs> it's true, try it. No one's paying attention if the flag's in the right place. <laughs> so I saw this, uh, I was reading a magazine and I saw this public service ad and it said in big white letters, too much alcohol can turn your car into a coffin. <laughs> I find that too much acid will do the exact opposite. <laughs> you, can, you can paint your own mental image there. <laughs> Alright, this joke is going to have a very limited audience. I'm aware of that, but I'm going to tell it anyway. So you ever notice how on the cover of most science fiction novels, all the reviews they print are by other science fiction authors? I don't think that's very fair. I feel most science fiction books are bad. They're probably just covering each other's asses. Someone on the internet will find that funny, it's okay. I'm well aware. Sometimes publishers, when they, uh, when they want to sell more of a book, they'll put on the cover like how many copies of the book is sell because uh, you want to be cool and like buy whatever everyone else is buying. So. This one time I saw this book, you might be familiar with it, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. Yes. And it's said, I'm glad you heard of it because otherwise this would make no sense. It said on the cover, over 15 million units sold worldwide. And that made me not want to buy the book because I live in the world and there's no way there's 15 million highly effective people in it. <laughs> that book doesn't work. <laughs> Actually, I find that most self-help books are just full of shit. They never tell you the real secret to your success. That's why I'm going to write the first honest self-help book. It'll be called, How to Make a Ton of Money Writing Bullshit Self-Help Books. <laughs> it will be the last bestseller. <laughs> Alright, so I'm about out of time. Um, I wanted to end on something like really hilarious and really funny. But I've never done any of this material before, so I'm not actually sure what that is. So instead, I'm going to leave you guys with something that is thought-provoking and maybe might give you a little hope for the future. <laughs> Do you realize in, in 20 years or so, on the internet, and in 20 years the internet might be some sort of super 3D internet where like the t-shirt ads literally fuck your eyes. <laughs> so, whatever form of the internet that exists, there's going to be a video on it of robots recreating the dance from the Thriller video. I just wanted you guys to know that. <laughs> I think you've got a lot to look forward to. And thank you all so much for coming out.